Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm back, really looking forward to what I'm going to be filming over the next couple of weeks, months, whatever. It's something I never thought I would ever do because I have watched these style of videos for years and I've always put myself down thinking that I'm not good enough to do it. But yeah, actually watching them brings me so much joy. So I was like, you know what, sod it, I'm going to do it myself. And that is to take part in a readathon. So I watch, used to watch, still do currently watch a lot of booktube, which is where people sit down, they talk about books, they do tags and readathons. Sometimes you get like 24 hour readathons and then there are monthly ones, etc, etc. I have never taken part in one just because life gets in the way, whether it was Previously, before I had P, working full time. Now, obviously, I have P. I'm a mum. I stay at home. Like, it's a struggle when you watch these YouTubers that I don't want to say have no commitments, but they can read for 24 hours, not go to sleep, and have no real consequences for it. Whereas with me, it would ruin <laughs> a good part of my week if I were to do that. So, I watch a YouTuber called Zoe Read by Zoe. During the month of April, I was doing daily slash weekly vlogs. I was filming my life every single day and uploading weekly. That took a lot of time. And when Zoe uploaded her video, <coughs> I was like, oh my god, that's really cool. I want to take part, but I can't because of the vlogging situ. So I was sitting down whilst people was at school the other day and I was like, you know what, sod it, I'm just going to do it a month late. I'm going to do it on my own with my friend and just do it because I want to. <laughs> So I thought I'd film the journey because I said that I wanted to do more book content because I'm obviously so passionate about it. So here I am today, three minutes into the video, finally discussing the whole situ. I'm not going to lie, it's quite geeky. I obviously have a big geek side to me that I guess I never really knew I had. But never mind. So this girl, I don't know what her name is, but she created this readathon. I think it was last year and this is the second time it's come round. And it's all based off and around Harry Potter. She spent hours making this word document which looked epic and I loved it so I wanted to obviously take part. Um, and she basically listed loads of careers from Harry Potter like, I can't remember all of them but I wanted like the librarian because I liked that because I like books. There was like journalist, herbologist or herbology or something like that. Um, loads of different careers within like Harry Potter's world, just bear with me. Um, and within the careers you have like subjects I guess and each subject would correspond to a book. So for example, I've got them written down. Um, Let's have a quick look. So for example, one of the topics was history of magic and the prompt for that, for that lesson, would be to read a book published at least 10 years ago. Another example is um, potions and potions was to read a sequel of a book. So etc etc. There were loads for read a book with more than one author, read a book with star in the title, read a book with animal on the cover, read adult work, um, read a book with set in the future, etc, etc. Loads of different like categories, and that's what I really liked. I liked having categories to read. I've got obviously a really big bookshelf, and sometimes I stare at it and I think, what on earth am I going to read next? And I get really overwhelmed. So I liked the fact that it was sort of like structured reading, I guess. So um, there are two parts of this readathon. It obviously took place in April, I'm doing it a month late, and then there's the second part which um, takes part in August, which is like the advanced bit. It's a bit complicated, I'm not gonna go into it. Just watch, um, I think Zoe recommends it quite well. So I'll leave hers link below um, and watch her. She's great, she does like 50 minute reading vlogs and they just make me feel warm inside. So I was looking through like this, the categories and what I felt was realistic for myself as a mum. I do have time to read and I do make it a part of my day to read in the evenings and things like that but I also didn't want to be unrealistic. I think if I were to not have pee and not have any commitments and not have a job and all of that I'd probably be able to read like nine to ten books if not more in a month but with life we've got um, the May 
spring break or whatever it's called what is it called it's not spring break it's like half term um i don't want to shoot myself up to fail so i've chosen the one that's three books this month and then six books in august i haven't really thought about that very well because august p won't be at school at all but i'll try my best um and that is a herbologist so the three exams they call them exams it's a bit weird isn't it but it's care of magical creatures herbology and potions which means i needed to put pick three books care of magical creatures which was an animal on the cover herbology which was a plant on the cover and potions which was a sequel i like i said have got a massive bookshelf i've read like 60 books on the shelf which probably holds like 250 <laughs> so a lot of my books could have been cross-referenced within the categories. Pretty much all of my books have flowers on. Um, a lot of my books have like a horse on or things like that. It's quite, it was quite easy for me to pick. I just needed to figure out what I wanted to read. For Herbology, this would have worked for Potions as well because it is a sequel, but I'm using it as Herbology. Um, and that is Caroline Roberts, The Cozy Seaside Chocolate Shop because we've got flowers and stuff all around so i'm now showing you my tbr if you don't know what tbr means it's to be read um this is the second book in the chocolate shop series i don't know if she's continuing with it i read the christmas one last year and i just wanted to continue with it another reason why i picked to read this is because i actually own it on kindle and i love reading on my kindle i would say i prefer reading on my kindle more than actual books just because I'm quite delicate with my books and I don't crack spines or anything, this is cracked because it was second hand. Um, but yeah, so I'm using this as herbology just because it's got flowers on the top. You can't um, use one book for two categories either, that's cheating. I don't know why there are rules, but there are. Um, so that is one of the first books that I'm going to read in May. The second category was Care of Magical Creatures, so that is with an animal on the front. Again, I have loads of books with animals. I could have picked multiple, but I wanted to try something different. I didn't want my TBR to be too chiclet heavy. Sometimes I get a bit bored and want something different. I've picked this. I am going to go into reading this very hesitant because I loved Caravelle so much and I believe this is very similar. This is The Night Circus by Erin Morganston. Because I'm reading this with Emmy, I think me and Emmy will discuss about this quite a lot and I thought this would be a good book to document my feelings in comparison to Caravelle because I just loved that series so much and I don't know how this is going to compare. So this um, says... The circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there when yesterday it was not. So again, very similar. I have no idea how it's going to be. This um, is set in like olden days. Historical. In the 1800s. Again, I don't really read historical books. So I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. But Zoe read it on her... Um, readathon and she really enjoyed it so i just want to give it a go it's something different and it's got a i want to say it's a raven on the front and it's also got a cat down here so there are animals on that so that is why i picked that one and um, the reason why i didn't give you a summary for caroline roberts chocolate shop one is because i didn't want to spoil the first one but it's basically about this woman that goes to the seaside she's been there for like five to seven years and she starts up her own business running a chocolate shop it's a really sweet easy sweet mind the plant it's just an easy read and then finally my potions book which is a sequel I don't actually have it here again I could have gone with let me see I didn't know how to I wasn't 100% sure whether a sequel means the second book in a series or just not the first so it could have been like the third or fourth because I've got quite a lot of series on my shelf I could have picked like the fourth book in the series but I didn't know if it counted so I wanted to go for a second um like a second book in the series if that makes sense I, like I said, I've got loads on my shelf, but the one that I picked is one that I don't actually own. I'm going to borrow Ellie's. She's not a reader, but for some reason she's got this book. And that is After You by Jojo Moyes. I read Me Before You. When did it come out? Like 2000, 
13, 14. Actually, no, I had P. I read that when P was like six months old. So 2016 was when I read that. I read it after I watched the film, which I think is why it sort of ruined my feels about the book. I enjoyed it from what I can remember, but I just sort of read it and was like, that's done. They're not making a sequel to the film, so I'm not interested in reading the book anymore. I don't really know why. And then my friend Rosie, who's on YouTube, she put a book review up about After You. I watched like five, no, I didn't even watch five minutes. I think I watched two or three. And I was like, I don't want to watch anymore because I want to read it again and see how I feel. I watched um, Me Before You with Amelia Clark and Sam Claflin. Uh, it was on the telly the other day. After watching that, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to give it a go. I see her books everywhere. She's just released the third book in the series, which is called Still Me. And I was like, you know what? Let's just give it a go. And it counts, and it counts? It counts for the sequel for Potion. So I feel like that, I feel like I've got quite a mixed TBR. I've got The Night Circus, which is completely different. I've got Caroline Roberts, which is sort of predictable. I hate to say that, but I'm starting to get a bit bored of chicklets, which are predictable. And then you've got Jojo Moyes, which is sort of like real life and like heart hitting stuff. I bawled my eyes out reading Me Before You. I think that's why I never picked up after you because I was just so sad after reading the first book. But it shows it's a good book if you can get emotions from it. So that's my TBR. I am also going to be reading other books throughout the month. I just didn't want to set my TBR for this weird thing. It, they're called Owls. It's called an Owls Readathon. I didn't want to set myself up to fail with this, but I have also got the final book coming out by Stephanie Garber called Finale. <clears throat> um, that's coming out this month, so I will probably be filming my um, journey and what I read this month within this and just give you my thoughts as I go whilst I read. And yeah, I'm excited to be doing a book vlog because I've never done one before and I thought just doing it over the space of a month as opposed to just one book I think it would be easier so let me know if you're going to take part I'm going to stop talking now I'm obviously not going to be reading today is um, May the 1st but I'm not going to be reading right now because it's currently 20 past 10 and I need to get pee ready so we can go out and see my grandma so I will catch you later today tomorrow I don't know it's going to be quite flexible which I'm really looking forward to um but I will catch you later with my thoughts. I'm going to start with the Caroline Roberts. Just because I think it's just an easy book to read. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, not that excited for it. I just finished a really, really good epic long series. Which was like nine books in total. The Mortal Instruments and Infernal Devices. I just need like a, a switch off book to read. Before I get invested in something else. Which is why I picked it. I'm not really selling it to you, I don't think. Never mind. I'm going to go and I'll speak to you all when I have some thoughts on reading. I'm also going to do a spread in my reading journal as well. So I'll show you that at some point as well. everyone today is a Saturday what is the date the 5th the 4th it's the 4th of May I obviously did my whole intro to this readathon thing and told you the book that I was going to read first um I am currently reading it on my kindle I've just been reading for like half an hour because P has been watching Thumbelina on CBB so I was like sod it I don't want to watch that, I want to read my book. So I am now at 56%. I don't know if that's going to focus or not. I really am not enjoying this book. The first one, The Christmas Chocolate Shop, I really liked. And I didn't think it was too, like, cringy. But this book is just awful. So in the first one, there was a main character, um called Max and he's still in the second one and 
they sort of discovered each other and found a relationship and all of that stuff and it was really okay. nice and they're just making Max out to be an asshole and I don't get it um her in the in the first book um the main character Emma she basically lost her fiance and he died um really tragic she then found love with Max blah blah in the second book which was obviously the one I'm now reading they've made Max be really committed to his job so he seems like a really inconsiderate boyfriend and now Luke's brother has come on the scene from what I can read I feel like it's going in the direction that she's going to be romantically linked with the brother called Nate she's going to sack things off with Max and I think she's going to lose her chocolate shop like it's just really really cringy and I'm not enjoying it but I'm halfway through, so I'm not going to give up. It's taken me, like, a long time to get to where I am. Um, I've taken some pictures of some of the stuff that I really hated. It was the first weekend that they hadn't made love since started since he started staying over. Emma sighed. He must be totally shattered, she reasoned, but there was still no... But she still couldn't help feeling disappointed. There was a time where he couldn't hardly wait until he got inside the door to make love to her and now this, had things changed so much between them already, like, ugh, bore off, oh, made love, how, why do you say made love twice in one sentence, I just didn't like that. Thank you very much. She, I, go have a look, I'm finding the character incredibly needy even though she's in her mid-thirties and I just don't like it and there's another section which I just cringed at. We could always take and have a glass out of wine outside, he suggested. Have a few moments out there at least. Emma then said, we'll need a fleece on, but yeah, why not? And then Max said, on oh, my arms around you, he gave a cheeky smile. Now that sounds like a good idea. It's just cringy, and it's not like sweet cringy either. It's just like an old woman trying to write a nice rom-com type of thing, and I just don't like it. It's so bad um so my readers one's not going well to, at the moment because i'm not enjoying the book but hey ho what have i got myself into i'm also going to film this clip today just because i didn't want all of my book entry clips to be of me looking like this but this is the reality of what i look like and it's also the reality of sort of the times I choose to read so I finished the book the other day and I think I gave it two stars I finished it I just needed to get it done and um, I think it's safe to say that I probably won't be picking up another one of the authors she's just released a new one I'm just not interested um I think my tastes have changed since I started um getting my reading bug back so, I need to put this down, this is, um, I finished that and I haven't read anything since and this happens quite a lot, whereas last month I had the whole of the Mortal Instruments series to read and I smashed through it and I also smashed through Infernal Devices, that was nine books and the in-between phase of finishing one series and not knowing what style I want to read next I hate because I'm not reading and I haven't read in like two or three days and that's a long time for me when I'm a big reader. So yesterday I went and got a couple of books on my Kindle. But the books that I have downloaded, I've actually read one but I wanted to reread because Finale is the um, book that's coming out this month. It's actually due out tomorrow. But I don't think my library is going to get it the day it gets published. I can imagine I'll probably get it early part of next week. So I have downloaded Legendary, which I've already read, but I wanted to reread. It was only a pound on Kindle, and I've got like forty pounds on my Kindle account because I got twenty-five for Christmas um, as a voucher, and then I also got fifteen for Mother's Day. So I've got like spare cash, I suppose, on there. So I've downloaded Legendary which is there. I then went to the charity shop and saw this one, which is called The One That Got Away by Helen Warner. That sounds quite good. It's like a chiclet. And I think three or four women are in love with the same man. I just thought it sounded interesting. And then I also downloaded Crazy Rich Asians, which is a trilogy. And it's also been turned into a movie series. So I thought I could potentially make that for Book Club Pick for July because 
June is the new page tune. So I thought July would that would be quite a nice different book. I can't imagine that the page tune is going to be similar at all. So um, I also got Crazy Rich Asians, which was one pound sixty, I believe. So it's the tenth of May, I think. And I am now doing a bit of reading. I've been busy today filming um, and sorting out my pre-records. I've got so many done. I just need to sit and edit. And I'm just really not filming, it, not feeling editing at the moment. So I think I'm going to take another week off YouTube. So I think that will be like three weeks off. But I don't care. It's my channel. I'll do what I want. Um, so the videos will be coming back. But it won't matter because by the time you see this... The videos will be back. I am reading Legendary. It's the first time I've done a reread. I read this back in October, I think. So it's not even like it's been a long time, but I've forgotten so much. I'm 7% in already. And I think for me to get fully invested in Legendary, which I'm still waiting from the library, it came, it got released yesterday. So I can imagine I'll probably have it by Tuesday next week. For me to fully enjoy and wrap up the whole story i just know i need to do the reread and it was on 99p on kindle i've already said that i think so i was like you know what sod it i'm gonna get it so i've got an hour before i need to go and do the school run i'm gonna treat myself take an hour out read on my kindle which is my favorite i've got a packet of crisps because i've already had my lunch today but i'm a little bit peckish i've got the heating on because it's cold i've got my bottle of water and i thoroughly enjoy sitting on this little sofa in the dining room it's my favorite spot to sit and read i've obviously got the radiator right here i can look outside the sofa's nice and firm and comfy so i'm just going to sit here and read my book reading on 31% I'm obviously reading it a lot faster than normal because um, I've read it before and it's really good I forgot how good it is so 31% obviously there will be spoilers for book two um, but we've just seen Teller and um, Jax which is the Prince of Hearts have the fate is it a fated kiss the bad kiss um, I can't remember what happens after this. Look, Rue's still up here. What are you doing? You silly girl. Hey? Um, yeah, I can't remember what happens after this. I'm really excited to get back into reading it tonight after work. Um, I, I really like the relationship with Teller and Dante. I completely forgot how much I like Dante. I'm really enjoying it. So I've never done a reread. I don't think. I don't think I've ever done a reread. I've read like Harry Potter twice, but I read it when I was smaller and then I read it as a teenager. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I didn't think I'd like doing a reread, but this is obviously a good one. I am now going to sign off for today because I've got to go pick Pay up from school and it's absolutely chucking it down with rain, so I need to find my coat um, and my shoes and stuff. So I will come back with an update when I have one. But yeah, if you haven't read Caravelle, go read it. It's really good and then read Legendary. Everyone, so today is the Oh, I'm out of focus for a start. Are we going to focus? There we go. Um, today is the 14th, 15th of May. And I finished Legendary last night. Oh, I loved it. I can't remember what I gave it um, on Goodreads previously. I must have given it five. But I'm giving it five star again. I enjoyed it the second time even more. Even though I knew what was going to happen, I forgot some really crucial points. Um, so I flew through it. I'm going to give spoilers. So 
beware if you haven't watched haven't watched if you haven't read caravel and if you haven't read legendary i need to put the camera down absolutely loved dante i couldn't remember how it ended um but the fact that the fates are coming back and dante's legend and just everything is basically gone to shit and it, i just don't know what's going to happen in the third book i'm still waiting for the third book to arrive at the library and then i can go and get it i don't think it's going to be here by the end of may i really don't think it is they've obviously been just distributed they're going to our main library and then they're going to get distributed that way so i'm still waiting for that but i really really loved legendary if you haven't read caravel or legendary obviously i've spoiled it for you but please go and read it they are so good and i'm not one for like high fantasy it's not high fantasy at all it's just really epic um i wish i did a book talk on caravel and legendary when i read them but we were moving house and i just didn't think about it and i feel like now i can't really articulate my feels because it's not the same um i am in, in a little bit of a rut so Obviously, I still want to read that Jojo book that I mentioned at the start of this video. But I don't have it. And my local library doesn't have it. And I don't want to buy it. So I'm still waiting for Ellie to find it in her shed. <laughs> waiting for Finale to obviously come to my library. So I don't want to read... I said I wanted to read Night Circus this, this month. Which I will. But I don't want to read that until I've read Finale. Because I want to finish that sort of like magical series. Instead of getting involved in another one. So, I am feeling something that I've never felt before, and I'm just going to go and run with it. Um, I'm going to go and sit in the dining room, actually, because P um, is requesting my company, because she's just eating her ice cream. Uh, it's like six o'clock. Um, right, let me put you down here. You all right? How's your ice cream? Thanks. Good. Right, I'm going to put you on a ketchup bottle. I'm such a professional. Um... I have never had the urge to read a Sophie before and I'm gonna give her a go. I'm gonna try a Sophie. I feel like I need a chiclet that's just not too um, thought provoking and something I can just switch off to. I feel like this is gonna be the perfect filler book in between this and Finale. I'm hoping to read Finale after this. Um, I have been loving reading my Kindle but I'm not gonna start buying books that I've got on my shelf because I've got them because I want to read it on my Kindle if that makes sense. So this is about a girl that loses her engagement ring and she's lost her phone she finds a random phone in a bin finders keepers except the phone's owner is an exclusive but the phone owner is an elusive businessman called sam and he wants his phone back and she reads through his messages I, I just can't wait to read it it sounds really good and i've never read a sophie i've never known where to start but i feel excited to give this a go i'm finally finally starting the sophie so i'm going to start this tonight i think i need to finish off ellie's baby blanket no. yeah, no, fine. that's right um and then i'm gonna get cracking on this so i'm gonna tidy up from dinner get pee bath in bed bedded into bed and then take my bra off have a shower and read my book and i'll update you with my thoughts as i go and then and then you can pick up and then i'll go on my lesson <laughs> And you've got ketchup all round your chops. <laughs> what are you doing, you nutter? Last night, wow, I look orange. Last night, I finished... I don't even know what book this is of them. Of them. Oh, I've bent it. What have I read? One... I read, is this book three? Yes, it is. I read, I read Caroline Roberts, uh, Legendary, and then this. This is my first ever Sophie Kinsella, and I really, really liked it. I feel like I need to move because I look so orange. So me moving position is clearly not going to change the colour of my face. Um, this looks worse. Let's just go with it. I'm turning into an orange. This book was really good. So it follows a girl called poppy and she loses her engagement ring and then she has her phone stolen it's really comical and she turns around and finds this phone in the bin 
she's like fine find us keepers and she still she doesn't steal but she takes this phone and she then ends up speaking to the guy that sort of owns the phone he has a company and he ha had his pa threw the phone in the bin because she didn't want to work for him anymore and that's how he meets sam um and it's just the story of poppy trying to a find this ring continue with life it's the week before her wedding so she's got a lot of shit going on and questions are thrown as to how she feels about her current partner Magnus because it was a really quick whirlwind of like a romance and they've been together three months I think before they got engaged and it's been like a really quick thing and it was just funny it's quite unrealistic but I really liked it I really liked the writing style and I'm so happy that I found a book or I found an author that I enjoy so for Kinsella's books have been sat on my shelf for a couple of years and I've never reached to pick one up and now I have and I'm so happy that I did. It was funny, it was a little cringy at times, I really liked it. I liked Poppy as a character, she's quite fun, bubbly and energetic and you get that through the writing and then I liked um, Sam, the guy obviously that she'd been messaging on the phone and stuff because it was his phone. I liked how blunt he was and how serious and how assertive he was and I liked the twists throughout. I found it very funny um, and I just really liked it so I really recommend it. Go and read it. On my Goodreads I gave it a 4 out of 5. Uh, on reflection, a part of me wants to give it like a 3.9 on my scale or like a 4.3 so I'm in between but I really really enjoyed it made me laugh I flew through it within a couple of days so if you want a good chiclet just to pick up and put down and switch off to I really really recommend this Sophie I can't wait to read some more I don't know what I'm going to go on to next I'm not going to do the um, Shopaholic series I'm not ready to get invested in another series yet um, but her standalones I'm definitely going to read more of I've got them all apart from her new release um, but yeah yay so i am not gonna read any more books until i get a finale i think it's now it says on my library app that it's in transport from hq to my local library so i think there's no staff there today so i think i'll get it tomorrow so i'm not going to read anything until finale i can't wait can't wait for that yay <laughs> So it's the 21st of May and I just wanted to do another entry update. I spoke yesterday about the Sophie Kinsella book that I finished and I wasn't intending on picking up another one but I had like 20 minutes to kill before I had to go pick Pete up from school and I had a book on my side that one of my friends recommended from my book club and she was like read this like it's really good. And it's this one, Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. And I think I read like 40 pages and I was hooked. And I'm now, bear in mind I started it 24 hours ago. I'm now on page 283. I've read that much, I've got that much left. I can't, I, the, no words at the moment. It is so good. It's like um, a page tune. The author's American. I haven't really ever read a, an American chiclet before. I'm going to do a separate book talk on it. I want to do a proper sit down video discussing all my points and my feels. Go and read it. I feel so emotionally invested in the story and I think I'm going to finish it tonight when P is in bed. But I just wanted to update you to say that this book is incredible and I've got maybe 100 pages left. I don't want it to end and I have no idea how it's going to go. So I'll update you when I've got an update, but it's so good. So I thought I would just show you, honestly, I can't do anything without being pestered. Go away. Um, I have just finished sorting out um, the printout of 
the um, like prompts and stuff. Do you mind? No? Okay, apparently not. Go away. I'm trying to film something. Lie there. Um, so I printed it all out. I didn't need to, but, you know, I wanted to. So I filled these things out. And this is what I have done. Like, I've passed. Passed. I know it's a bit cringe. So I've read Care of Magical Creatures. I did the Sophie K. I did the Herbology, Caroline Roberts. Um, and I did potions for Stephanie Garber. And I also did an extra one, which was the Muggle Studies for Christina Lauren. Because Muggle Studies classifies as contemporary. So... Um, I'll quickly show you. See, this is what I wanted to do. I thought it was really cool. And I've got this for next time. Here we go. Herbologist. So, um, I've written it down there as well. And then I've ticked things off. And then this is what I will be doing in August. Um, I'm not too sure what the prompts will be and how many it means for each. I think that might be two or three that might be two and that might be one i'm not 100 percent sure um but that is the printout i've just put them all in the wallets so that was that and then i've also been working on my reading journal so that means 2019 in roman numerals um i have put out my reading like my 2019 reading goal and I've been sticking things as I go so I've read five books this month so I've just done all of that I want to do a proper in-depth video about my reading journal but this is what I have done for the readathon so my reading journal is very very basic I'll just quickly give you a quick overview very simplistic no fancy like writing or anything like that I just like very minimal things so this is my little spread. So obviously the career I chose was herbologist and I needed to read books for these three prompts. So book one was Care of Magical Creatures, Animal on the Cover and the one that I picked was I've Got Your Number by Sophie Kay. I will show you these books and the covers at the end as well. I'll do that clip after this one. Book two was Herbology, Plant on the Cover and that was The Cozy Seaside Chocolate Shop by Caroline Roberts. And then finally, book three, which was Potions, and that was to read a sequel, and that was Legendary. I didn't know if I could count it because it was a reread, so I've also counted Finale, which was the third, but it's still, like, I don't really know. Uh, and that was by Stephanie Garber. And then the additional one, which I managed to do, was Muggle Studies for Contemporary, and that was Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. So that is my progress. so today I am back to do a quick summary of finale I didn't tell you that I picked it up from the library and I also just sort of cracked on and started reading it because obviously I've been invested in this and I wanted to get started as quick as I could I also want to apologize about the spots on my face I'm really conscious about them at the moment and when I cover them up they go all dry and flaky and I just look I look hideous at the moment and I don't feel like there's anything that I can do about my appearance that makes me look okay. I've really hated filming myself at the moment. And especially when I read, I look like this, normal, but rank. And I just, I look vile. So just excuse that. I'm quite conscious at the moment of my appearance. Like, look at me. I look like a toe. Why are these sticking out? Doesn't matter, you're not here for my appearance, you're here for my book chats, hopefully. Um, so Finale came and I read it on Friday, which is the clips you would have seen of me like just sitting in the garden. And I was out there for like three and a half hours. I've never read outside. Like in the UK, I always read inside. And the only time I've read like outside is being abroad. And I really enjoyed sitting down in the garden. I want to say I was really happy. 
but I wasn't. I was very, very disappointed with this book. It's been a while since I finished it now and this doesn't bring me joy. I look back on Finale and Caravelle and I think what an incredible series. And then this came along and I think, should I even recommend Caravelle and Legendary to people when this was a big flop in my opinion? Um, so spoilers for obviously previous books and for this one. So if you haven't read it, just be warned. Caravelle was set in Scarlet's POV. Legendary was set in Teller's POV. I preferred Teller over Scarlet. This is set in two POVs, Scarlet's and Teller's. Predominantly Teller, she's got a lot more um, stuff that evolves around her, whereas Scarlet, I feel like she just, she wasn't really um, emphasised on at all um, in this book, really. She was pretty pointless. Um, so we start where we left off. It's been, I think it was two months from when everything went down at the end of Legendary. And we follow Scarlet and Teller with their mum back. The mum wakes up, she runs away, she gets killed. They find out the way to kill all of the fates. And that is the premise of the story. I just thought it was really, nah, I, I think I gave it four stars, but on reflection I'd give it three. The main points that I loved about Caravelle and Legendary were the fact that the characters were ballsy and they took chances and they were their own person and relationships didn't defy them and it was just magical and this it just wasn't. I wanted so much more depth when it came to like the fates and the magical world and the ins and outs and I wanted more expo exploration with the characters and we didn't get it. The only thing we got was sort of in-depth knowledge about Jax and Jax was my favourite character in this. I thought he was great. Dante in this really annoyed me. Um, Julian annoyed me. Teller and Scarlet annoyed me. I just loved Jax and <laughs> I don't think that's how I should really feel. Um, I thought that the love triangle between Jax, Teller and Dante was completely pointless because we all knew at the end that Teller would eventually go for Dante. I just felt like it was a lot of toing and throwing mind games which was completely unnecessary, not really relevant, um, made the characters, um, obviously especially Teller, made her seem quite weak when we know that she wasn't and I just feel flat from reading this book I feel really disappointed I feel really let down and I hate that because I've been looking forward to this since I read Legendary yeah since I read Legendary in October albeit not as long as what other people have had to wait but I feel like I've been so excited for such an epic finish and betrayal I want that's what I wanted I wanted betrayal I wanted more like in-depth information with the fates and I wanted to see them more and I don't feel like we really got to explore like the whole point of the second book and I just I just I I have no words I'm really annoyed um so this is the last book that I will read in May because I've had a bad experience it's really put me off reading anymore I've still got a couple of days left I probably could fit in another one um but I just I don't know, I feel really sad and really disappointed. I honestly thought this was going to be one of my favourite books of the year and it's not. I will still buy it when it comes out in paperback just to finish off the trilogy because I love the first two so much but I don't think I'd ever reread it, which I know is silly but... Oh, why? It's not just me that has this feels as well. Whilst I was reading it, I also um, was messaging a friend that I speak to online sometimes about books called Rachel. Uh, and she read the whole thing in a day. <laughs> and she said, what did she say? Oh, she just felt like she was, wait that was it. She was waiting for the point of it to be like, holy shit, this is amazing. And she said she never felt that. And I'm the same. I never got that think of like the, the turning point of being like, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. I never got that. Um, I didn't really care the fact that they didn't have the same father. I didn't care for the fact that Scarlet's dad was the fallen star. I didn't like the ending when they jumped back in time and then they went forward again. And um, 
like the killing or like the death of the fallen star or whatever it was i just oh and like the proper ending like the pro is it the prologue the epilogue whatever it is I didn't really care for the fact that scarlet was going to become empress i didn't really understand that or get why is it just because she killed um the fallen star um didn't really rate that and then at the end Tella and dante weren't even together she wrote him a letter saying i know that you like to play games blah blah and i was just like what like i just is caraval gonna be a thing anymore like so many questions unanswered and i just am cross <laughs> i'm gonna stop ranting about this now because i don't feel like i've ever been so cross about a book on my channel before hi everyone so today i'm back just to wrap up this whole readathon thing i've got my little helper here we're now about to go and walk to the library and take um one of my books back and a lot of books for p so i thought i'd just quickly sit down and do the wrap up so in the month of june no sorry my bad in the month of may doing this readathon i ended up reading one two three four i read five books i started a sixth but i started it on the 30th and i didn't finish it until the 2nd of june so i'm not going to count that um so this is my spread for may so i thought i'd quickly show you that so i've colored in the stars i can't remember if i've shown it to you or not um so i just thought i'd sit down and just go through like my thoughts and stuff and do a quick wrap up um and then leave you all to it because this video has probably been like an hour long so i started off with the caroline roberts the cozy seaside chocolate shop thought it'd be quite a nice read but i just found it really naff really cringy and i don't think i would reach for anything by this author for the rest of the year um i just didn't rate it i thought it was just really flat and i didn't care for the character so yeah i think my reading style has changed since i read the first one which was over a year ago now so i started with that i read that from the first to the fourth and i gave that a two star rating the caroline roberts book also counted as my herbology um lesson which was with the plant on the cover then went on to read my second book which was legendary now this was a reread for me um this is by stephanie garber i read this from the 10th to the 14th and i gave this a five star rating i absolutely loved it second time round. i thought it was epic i thought it was really magical really punchy a lot of drama um not knowing how it was going to go even though i read it i thoroughly enjoyed it reading it a second time round. I counted Legendary as my options for Potions, which was a sequel. But I also counted something else because I didn't know the ins and outs. It doesn't really matter. Oh, I'm out of breath. The third book I read was my first ever Sophie Kinsella, which was I've Got Your Number. I gave this a four star rating, read it from the 15th to the 19th. I really enjoyed this. This was everything that I wanted in a chick lit. It was funny. It was a quick, quick paced book a little bit um exaggerated not even a little bit quite a lot exaggerated is that the right word like it very dr dramatized but i enjoyed it all the same this book was love and other words by christina lauren i'll put a picture here because i actually returned my copy to the library i gave this five stars and i read it from the 20th to the 21st of may so i think it says a lot about how i felt about the book i thoroughly enjoyed it i loved it it was just beautiful and i cannot wait i've actually got um a christine la lauren book to pick up from the library this afternoon or this morning um and i cannot wait to get started on that i also have one on my kindle that i need to read as well which was kindly given to me by my friend emma i've mentioned her in this vlog she was very naughty and brought me a kindle book and i told her not to so i now need to repay the favor and get her one as well but i loved it and then finally i wrapped up the month from with reading finale by stephanie garber and i read that from the 23rd to the 25th and that is this one this is a library borrow and you all know my feels if you've watched a video you'll know how i feel about this and i'm still not over it very annoyed at the situation but i'm glad i didn't pay i almost paid 9.99 on kindle to get it that's how excited and invested i was in the series and I am so happy I didn't do it because I would have been fuming. 
So that is all the books that I read within the month. I also counted this as um, the potions prompt. Oh, and I also didn't say that I counted this as the care of magical creatures because there is a magpie on the top. I don't know if that counts, but adapting it to how I want. So that is everything that I read. My favorite book of the month that I read was Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. I absolutely loved it. So. I think I did quite good this month. I read five books, which is normally my average. I range from sort of four to six, I would say. Sign off. Leave me a comment like let model have you there. Leave me a comment below and let me know if you enjoyed it. If you'd like me to do more. It's my first ever reading vlog, and I feel like I've gone quite off off topic. Um, but I have enjoyed reading it, and I think it would be good for me and my brain when I go back to sort of get into a series or refer back to reading a book i've got my video thoughts down like whilst i'm going through it if that makes sense so yeah leave me your thoughts and comments below and i'll see you all in my next video bye